today we're going to talk about the, the jQuery mobile framework. And we're going to talk about it, and I want to make sure that you understand um, what it's used for, uh, what, what, the, what our goal is here. I, I do want to talk about, in general terms, just about frameworks and what it means when, when, when we say we're using a framework. So I want to talk about that. I want to talk about specifically what the jQuery mobile framework provides us. Uh, then I want to talk about how we use it on our page. All right. When when we use the, the term framework, what does that what does that mean to you when we talk about using a framework to develop either an application or a website? So kind of like a like a template or a template. That's that's a that's a good good word. Anyone want to know that? Please do. <laughs> oh, Please do. Uh, I don't know, a set of ideas or values by which you understand something. Okay, a set of ideas and values by which you understand something. Um, and, and that is that is true. Um, I would say this being a, a little more of a practical field, instead of thinking about understanding something, it may be like working with something, a, a set of things that will that will allow you to work it. Can yes. I take the opposite view of hers and say that it's... Yeah, this could be a fun I'm class. Gonna take, I'm going to take the exact opposite and say it's something that you can use if you don't necessarily need to understand something, but you just oh, need, you know, you need the functionality of it. No, you take somebody else's you take somebody else's work and you and you just add it to your own and, and you create something. Okay, for those of you that are watching this on YouTube, my head just exploded. And that was advocate. Uh, I I as you might guess, I totally understand that. Because if you I totally disagree with that rather, because if you don't understand a framework, in my mind you're gonna have a hard time using it and you're gonna have a hard time when you want to deviate from the norm, and if you don't understand the concept. Like I've had people tell me, or, or, or suggest, or something along the lines, why don't I teach jQuery in the 232 class, you know, uh, and all that. And it's a case of, you know, that's kind of like saying, well, you know, kids don't need, need to know math because they have calculators, right? You can use a calculator without really knowing what adding is, as long as you hit the right button. Well, yeah, except for the fact that if you don't really understand it, you might not be sure when to hit the right button, or you might do things um, in a way. It is, it is possible to do what you suggested, to use a framework without having an understanding, but I would definitely suggest against doing that. Well, what I meant was more like without having to actually go through and sit and write like the actual code for behind something like line for line and all that. Like almost okay. like how, we, how we borrow people's code and put them in. That's kind of where I was going. That is a different statement. Okay. Then. So yeah, we'll, we'll piece my head back together. <laughs> that is a different statement. And all these things I think give a good, good, uh, um, um, good um, background for the discussion of frameworks. Because you know, I think we have the right idea here. Um, in our case, a framework is simply, and this even goes to your philosophical uh, uh, definition, a framework in, in this context is a set of tools that we build on. All right? So like, for example, you know, if you were to take, you know, if you're thinking of like in terms of uh, intellectual framework, if you're going to take a calculus class, your framework, your mental ideas, your way of viewing the world is an understanding of algebra and geometry and all that. That's your framework. And then you build on top of that. And in education, they always talk about this. In fact, they use another word for it. Uh, schemas, borrowing from the database uh, uh, terminology. Whereas, you know, when you learn something and when you're faced with new knowledge, you try to incorporate it into what you've already seen, right? You try to incorporate it in your framework. So in other words, let's say a kid has dogs his whole life. He's grown up and he has, he has pet dogs. So he sees a dog and 
Then one day he goes over to his cousin's house and his cousin has a cat. Now he's likely to call that cat a dog, right? Because for him, a little furry thing that runs around that lives in your house is a dog. Well then, he incorporated that into his framework, all right? And says, hmm, it has these characteristics, must be a dog. And in learning, what learning is to a large degree is breaking away from that framework, right? Of saying, okay, well, no, not all the ones are, you know, if it has these characteristics, it's probably a dog. If it has these, it's probably a cat. And then you got to go through the same thing if someone has a, uh, I don't know. Hamster. Thank you. Hamster, all right, or whatever. So it's a set of tools, like in the case of learning, in the case of education, it's a set of, of tools and mental constructs and ideas that we build upon, we build upon when we learn. Because when we learn things, we're building upon the stuff that we already knew before. All right? In the case of software, it's a little more tangible. All right? It's a set of code tools. And it could be in a variety of different platforms that we're going to use to build on. And to your point, you're correct. What it does is you don't have to go back and reinvent the wheel every single time. In other words, there is stuff. It's, it's just like writing a function, or it's just like taking CSS code, putting in a separate file, or it's just like writing an include file. It's a set of components that you can plug into your page, and you can get their functionality. Um, functionality that's been tested. Functionality that is going to be consistent. And functionality that you don't necessarily have to go back to ground zero and code from the bottom up. That being said, you ought to understand the basics behind it. All right, with that. So again, you know, I, I just heard a few words and just just jumped to conclusions. I like, yeah. Convey what I was right. Right. Okay. We're we're all better now. So jQuery is a framework. All right. Uh, its cousin, jQuery Mobile is another framework. And know that if I ever say jQuery, I mean jQuery mobile from now on. <laughs> All right? Because sometimes just, you know, I blurt out jQuery. jQuery mobile is a framework. And what it's for, it's for giving style and behavior to um, stuff on especially mobile websites. You could use it actually on a desktop website if you wanted to. But is to give style and behavior to mobile websites. By virtue of those words, style and behavior, what does that sort of imply, the languages that are going to be used? CSS, CSS and, JavaScript. and JavaScript. All right? So it doesn't do anything for your content, right? I mean, hey, you got to do some work, right? You can't have a framework that does everything for you. But what a typical good framework does is it looks at the sorts of things that you would want to do over and over and over and makes those simple to do. Now, some of you are taking um, the 243 class, the web database integration, and there we're using the .NET framework, which is a different sort of framework because it's approaching a different set of common functionality. The jQuery mobile framework is, again, geared towards behavior and <coughs> appearance on mobile websites. And specifically, to a large degree, it's giving you, on a web page, behavior and appearance that looks a lot like a native app. So essentially, you're creating a website that is kind of disguised as a wearing a costume of a mobile app. It's still a website. It has all the advantages and disadvantages of, the, uh, uh, of using a mobile website as opposed to a native app. But it has a look and feel of a mobile app. And that's a, that's a big win, right? And it's, it's such that you don't have to code all of it yourself. All right? So what I'm going to do is um, we're going to look at an example. We might look at a couple examples today. And we'll see how far we go, and then we'll plot our, our, our next move for Wednesday. So let me bring up By the way, the issue with your logons has been fixed. 
You should be able to log on now. If you can't, let me know. And uh, the only downside is you can't change your password. You have to contact me. All right. Let's go and let's look at this. This is the example right out of the book. Um, and if you want, you can even download this and try to recreate it to, to go through the steps. But this is chapter six, I think, in the textbook. And I did not want to do that. All right. In fact, let me go and run this in the mobile emulator. Let's go and open up Opera Mobile with our friend, the HTC Hero. And this is how this looks. This is uh, supposedly a site for selling tartans. All right. And this is meant to be a very small phone, so we don't really have a lot of um, size on the screen. Let's make a slightly bigger screen. Looks a, yeah, this one looks a little better. We'll go with this one. And as we navigate around, notice a couple things. Notice that the links, the navigation, which is down here, really looks more like a mobile navigation than a typical sort of website navigation. So as we go and click around from page to page, and actually, there we go. This is actually working fairly quickly, but there you go. Notice the little loading thing that pops up, kind of gives us a level of assurance that something's happening. So let's review the functionality for this, all right? And let's, let's review the look and, and, and what sort of makes this look like a mobile device, all right? So one thing that we have is we have uh, navigation that looks like buttons. We have, let's go to this page, we have a header and footer that stays constant. So the header is going back there on the top, and the footer is on the bottom. We get the nice little loading screen. So it's a little animation, actually, that runs as we go from page to page. So, framework is a set of tools, a set of components is probably a better way to put it in terms of software. Its purpose is to allow us to build upon these components. And again, the idea is, is it's going to take something that's common and make it easy to do. All right. So, wanting a header and footer that stays still on the page is very common within a mobile app. <laughs> and a mobile website, you would want that effect as well. So they made it easy to do that. Links that look like buttons, links with little icons on it, much like an app would. All those things are features of a mobile app that you might want to do on a mobile website. And if you're going to do it, you don't want to have to write it all yourself. You want to be able to use the functionality uh, that's built into the framework. So let's look at the source code for this. This is out on the server, but we can look at the source code. All right. This is a line, by the way, that you should have on every one of your mobile pages. I may have mentioned that, but if I didn't, I'm mentioning it now. What that does is that sets the initial zoom property correctly. Here are actually three files. And notice I'm hot linking these directly to the jQuery site. All right. In other words, I haven't downloaded these to my web server. If you go out on CISSQL, 
there aren't copies of this file. Um, but I have a CSS file, and I have a couple of JavaScript files. There's really sort of two purposes for this. Um, one, the, the style obviously is to contain things about the appearance. The code in, and again, we can, we can look at the, the, you know, we could go in and examine the jQuery co uh, code in more detail if we wanted to, but part of the job of the JavaScript is to take and apply the styles to stuff on our page, right? Because how do we apply styles to stuff on our page? Typically, we apply them with HTML tags. We can set a style via HTML tag. We can set a, st we can set a style via CSS class. And we can set a style via ID. Well, how do we apply these special jQuery mobile styles to this? Well, one of the ways that we can do it, and we'll see the sort of the hook into jQuery mobile, jQuery mobile is the use of these data roles. All right, and these data roles tell jQuery why we are using certain sections of the web page. What are we using it for? All right, that has the side effect of applying, taking and applying certain behaviors and style appearance to those things. Okay? So, that's what we have so far. And then I have my own CSS file to style things that jQuery is not addressing. Let's look up. Let's go in and Google and find the jQuery site because it's possible they even have a new version since since uh, I did this example. If you look, if you do a download, all right, they have instructions of code that you can copy and paste. Now you can download them if you want to, or you can simply point to the stuff that's out there. If you download the code, if you are ambitious, you could actually go in and tweak some stuff in it. That's probably not a good idea though, um, because the problem is if they come out with a new version of it and you go to use it, you're gonna lose all your changes, right, as you re-download the files. So you could read out, you could download the files if you want to, or you can um, you can um, simply point to them on their web server. They let you do that. All right. For each of these, and you'll see this is pretty standard. Whenever you're downloading downloading libraries or, or frameworks of things, typically they give you two versions, and you don't need both the versions. You you can use one or the other, and one of them is compressed and the other one is minified. All right. Now when we talk about uh, about compressed, we're not talking about zipped up. All right. So uncompressed doesn't mean the regular file and minified means zipped up. What it means is uncompressed is written in a style where you can easily read the code. Whereas minified is written in a style to get the absolute minimum file size. So let's download both of these and take a look. So if I download that, this one, and I download this one, if I look at these two, the one that's not minified is 350KB. The one that is minified is 141KB. Now you might say to yourself, well that's not really that much of a, of a savings. Well when you consider everyone hitting it and downloading it and all that, over time it would would uh, constitute um, you know, uh, a savings of, of bandwidth on your server. Let's look at this. Here we edit it and we're seeing JavaScript like you might have regular JavaScript you know, in the, that you would write. 
There's a whole set of things that they make available for you. And nice 11,000 11, lines of code in this. All right. But you could read it all if you wanted to. All right. It's all in there. I assume this is an open source product. Well, they're giving you the source for free, so it must be, right? And you could go and change something if you just hated the way that jQuery Mobile did something. Again, I would probably not do that, but you could. Let's look at the min version, the minified version. It is nine lines of code. Each line of code, of course, is... This line is 32,000 characters long, <laughs> all right? So it's written for, it's written to make the absolute smallest size. I mean, it's the same code. And if you look at it, you know, you could find the function. They just essentially got rid of all the white space, right? Any of the new lines or extra spaces that weren't needed, they, they got rid of them, all right? So this makes for a more compact file to download. And it will, it will save their servers or your server a little bit of time. So, they give you instructions on what to do, and you don't even need to download it if you don't want to. Now, in my case, I have a certain version of this. If we looked out there, this is possible that this could be a newer version. Let's look at. Yeah, it's definitely a newer version. It was... Version 1.3.2, I'm using version 1.0. I'm using 1.0 for this and 1.64 for that, and they have available 1.91 for that. So there are newer versions of this. And again, I, I, I guess I haven't studied to see what the difference is between the versions. As typical uh, with new versions, I'm sure they probably added um, new stuff, and I'm sure they probably fixed some bugs. I would hope it would be backwards compatible to the point where all I would need to do is plug the new files in and nothing I had that worked before would break. I might be able to do some new things or it might have fixed some potential problems, but I should be able to simply copy and paste this code out there and have it work. And they give you some other opportunities. They also give you um, sort of legacy versions if, again, you had something that the new version didn't work quite right for, or for whatever reason, then you can, you can roll back to an older version and they supply those files. Now this is going to be a very valuable site to have. One thing I mentioned is <coughs> they have a list of sites that actually use them. So if you want to see who, gee, who uses sites like this, the Khan Academy, um, Disney World, SlideShare, Stanford, <coughs> Moulin Rouge, One thing you can do that we won't cover today, probably not anyhow, is themes. Themes allow you to sort of pick a color combination uh, that you want, or define a color combination, and it, then it will define the code for you. And, but there was more. I wanted to find the documentation. There's getting started, introduction. And so on. Let's look at this. A whole list of things that we have. If we look at one of the elements, for example, um, pages and dialogues, anatomy of a page. And they talk about how to develop a page using this. 
you know, what the structure that you need up front, the links that you have to the site, and so on. Then, again, notice, and this is where the documentation becomes valuable, is they identify the different data roles that you can put on, the different data attributes that you could put on. Data roles is just one of them. Let's follow this link. All right. So here's all the things that you can put on. And what does this do? This hooks the style from what's built into jQuery Mobile to your particular instance of it. And we'll keep this up and we'll play around with it. All right, we'll keep this up and we will play around with it. I'm going to do this. I'm going to take this one page. I'm going to take the home page. And I'm going to save it to my local machine so I can play around with it. So there's a local copy of this page I can play around with. Interesting enough, it gave me two of those things. I'm not really sure why, but I'm sure we can figure that out. All right. So let's look at this. I'm going to take and I'm going to insert to this. Yeah, shoot. I'm going to insert into this code. The newest jQuery stuff so that we have that to look at. All I'm trying to do is get a version here on this local machine that I can run without having to go out to that other server, which might be more trouble than it's worth, but that's what I'm doing. There we go. Although I did lose the footer. I'll have to figure out why that is. All right. So let's go and edit this. All right. By associating things with a data role, we tell it how this is going to Just go out the server. That was a dumb move to try to 